Hello everybody, welcome to this, this is your weekly Dory Monday Night Raw review, I apologise that this is late, here on youtube.com slash sports uh, obviously on the on the lkvip.podbean.com, which you can subscribe for, for 99 pence per month, also that's $1.05, about 1 euros and 3, so it's fairly cheap a month, you get get great daily content, obviously that's uploaded on Tuesday, so I'm not actually late for that. However, with the with the YouTube here on, on the Cooker Sports YouTube channel, I do apologise that this is late. It's quite frankly at three thirty, I fell asleep. I, sometimes I can't help it. I'm sat there on the sofa, I was watching on the TV, and I just fell asleep. And obviously, Raw's one to four fifteen a.m. And I am so sorry that I did fall asleep. I didn't want to or mean to. It just sometimes happened. And I woke up and it was like five. I was there fuming. So I thought, fuck, I'm just going to go to bed, go to sleep. When I wake up, I'm going to do the show. So it's now 3 p.m. as of this recording. And again, just, I am so sorry that I, I fell asleep. I, know I, I promised everyone that I'll do the Raw Review live. I failed, and I apologise. I hope you understand, you know, obviously with work and all this BS. Anyway, Raw, 11th of July from Detroit, Michigan. We start off with a battle royal to determine the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. That being, obviously, at the Battleground event. This was a standard battle royal. When I mean a standard, I mean, you know, the normal shenanigans, you know, all the first five to ten minutes don't matter. They're unimportant. You could not watch it and it won't matter. Uh, and it was your standard list of mid-carders, you know, your Heath Slayers, your Jack Swaggers, you know, your Curtis Axel's my boy. Um, basically, ah, uh, Jesus Christ, Mr. No Days Off or Mr. Fucking Toiletry himself, Darren Young. He wins this match. Um, Del Rio in this. I don't know if anyone else picked up on this, but he got eliminated twice. Um, if you remember, he went for his uh, his silly enziguri thing, but he got caught on the ropes. He held up on the ropes. Sigler super kicked him. Del Rio fell to the floor, and then Del Rio just picked himself back up, went back in the ring. He then got dumped out again. And I'm like, what the fuck? Did I miss something there? Did I really miss something there? Uh, <laughs> oh Jesus, a Corbin. Um, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but Corbin is actually growing on me. Like, I think the guy is actually becoming a, a pretty okay sports entertainer. You know, he, I think he's improved tremendously. He isn't, obviously, a, a fucking superstar in the making. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there is some potential in the guy. I mean, he's he's finally developed a move a move set. I mean, his end of days is, is pretty cool. Uh, you got his uh, deep six, which when it, what he hit on Darren Young during this match was absolutely magnificent. And uh, I don't know. I, the question is, is are they going to give him a feud to sink his teeth into? Obviously, he's this heel. I, I, I don't want him and Ziggler to ever be in a, a, a same the same room together, or a same you know even in the same building. I get a bit agitated because obviously the amount of times we've seen Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler over the past few months is absolutely damn right disgraceful. Then the event, a Corbin and Cruz eliminate each other, and then Darren Young sells it like it means something, and that, that I did like. I generally did enjoy this towards the end anyway, and the issue is when you watched it, you're like, oh, and you saw Darren Young, and you're like, oh, no, don't do it, don't do it, and then they do it. The crowd were, you know, they were chanting Darren Young, and I, I was shocked at how over Darren Young actually was in this, and that's not an insult. It's <laughs> that was just, just a fact of life, Mr. Eli Drake, TNA tonight. Uh, head over to v- lkvip.podbean.com to listen to my preview of TNA Impact Wrestling. And also there'll be a review on there as well. And with this Battle Royal, you're, it's hard to make a Battle Royal enjoyable just because nothing happens. Like It's just 18 guys, you know, each trying to go at it in a turnbuckle. It's really not very interesting and I don't, didn't particularly enjoy it. But Darren Young wins. We've got Darren Young versus Miz. Hopefully the crowd can get behind Young and it could be interesting, but I'm expecting this to get the death spot on the card and just a filler. But, you know, maybe it could be something cool and we could see a, a Darren Young uh, push, so to speak. I don't like using that word, but it could see a Darren Young push. Interesting. We then have hype for the New Day versus the Wyatt's confrontation at the compound. This was just blatant copying TNA. You know, last week they did that 8 versus 8, which was, was copying the CMLL. Uh, now they're copying TNA, and it's, okay guys, I know you can't create anything, but can you stop stealing other people's creative? Uh, well, at Battleground, it was then announced that on Jericho's highlight reel, it will be special guest Randy Orton. Uh, obviously, you guys know I'm a huge fan of if you build a sports entertainer from the ground up, you get Randy on, so I was happy with this. Then have a backstage segment where 
Zack Ryder's talking to Rusev, and then Sheamus beats up Ryder after pretty much Ryder challenges Rusev. So setting up Zack Ryder versus Rusev, and at least there's some interest now and some intrigue and a reason behind Sheamus and Zack Ryder, because obviously Zack Ryder defeated Sheamus on SmackDown last week, and obviously now Sheamus wants revenge because he's embarrassed. I guess that's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Uh, Zack Ryder with a new theme, new merch, winning wrestling matches on television, not on superstars, on actual television, on on, on national international television. I'm a bit concerned. I'm 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 in fact I'm very concerned that with this brand split we could see a potential push of Zack Ryder. But the way this was booked both baffled me, made me happy, and then depressed me in five seconds. All in literally five seconds. So Sheamus gets the bro kick to get the win. I'm pumped. Then after the match, Rooster comes out, applies a really nasty accolade, screaming, I accept your challenge! I accept your challenge! This is what I don't get. So so, so we get from Zack Ryder, you know, challenging Rusev. Sheamus defeats Rusev. Uh, Sheamus defeats, sorry, Zack Ryder. So Zack Ryder loses. And now Zack Ryder gets to become the number one contender for the US Championship, but he just lost a match. In that that just baffles my mind. It pisses me off, and it's what's wrong with WWE. And I can't. St- it's so frustrating. How about how about this? Okay, this isn't LK books WWE, but I'll do a bit of booking for you. How about you have Zack win with a roll up? They obviously wanted Sheamus to look strong, so heading to the draft. So then have Sheamus bro kick Zack, and then you don't have Sheamus look like too much of an imbecile because he only lost by a roll up. Then have Rusev come out and accept because Zack won the match, and you know. <laughs> This is coming from a Zack hater. If you want, if you want Zack Ryder to be the guy, you gotta have him win. It's as simple as that. You, you can't expect me to see him come out, job, and then get a championship match and expect me to actually tr- take him seriously. Speaking of not taking seriously, Breeze Zango versus Lucha Dragons. Uh, this match is happening because on the pre-show, Sin Cara threw some kind of drink gimmick onto Breeze. Again, I guess at least they've given us something here. Uh, Breeze hits a super kick in the corner and rolls him up to get the win. Obviously, roll up there, so obviously they're still trying to protect the Lucha Dra- Dragons a little bit. But, you know, Breezango, I'm a fan of Breeze, I'm a fan of Fandango, so why not? And if you do hear sounds of like that in the background, it's just I take notes. And I'm a traditional folk. I uh, take notes on a pen and paper instead of the keyboard. Uh, so that's what the noise is if you think I'm fucking flapping my fucking penis, I'm not. I guarantee you that. Uh, during this match, though, Kalista did fuck up a springboard pretty badly. Thankfully, the man's okay. Uh, then we have a Rollins report. Uh, basically, it was a funny video segment on Rollins' interview Reigns. So it's it's new clips of Rollins, but it's old clips of Reigns. If you're under the age of 14, maybe 13, maybe 12, maybe 11, maybe 10, you might enjoy it. I thought, you know, it put a little bit of a smile on my face, which is the point. But this is where the, the, the good stuff happens. So you have Dean Ambrose, he comes out. Rollins cuts this awesome, intense promo, hyping their match at Battleground. Ambrose then reacts with an awesome intense promo saying anytime, any place, one on one match, WWE Championship. Rollins says next week. General goodness here. Like excuse me. Great promo. Great promo from bro both. I, I, I love this new confidence and, and cocky arrogance in Rollins. I was never a fan of of the chicken shit heel Seth Rollins, but I'm a big fan of, of when he says he's Seth frickin' Rollins. That is a guy I can get behind. You know, and I, I was so happy when, when they fucking announced that they have a championship match next week. Finally, when was the last time on Monday Night Raw that we got a WWE championship match? I can't remember it. I honestly cannot remember the last time we saw a WWE championship match on Raw. I think you have to go back all the way to December. When Reigns defeated Sheamus. And that was awesome. Oh, dude, this, this is tough. Because obviously it's, it's the go-home show for the pay-per-view. At least they're promoting something. And that was two damn good promos. And two good, great promo cards. That was generally magnificent. I'll check that out if you haven't watched it yet. Then you have Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. So you have backstage Owens refused to wrestle. Unless Sami Zayn gets removed from ringside. Because Sami Zayn came out to do commentary. Zayn and Owens then brawl, brawl until the referees separate. Uh, we have backstage segment where Vince arrives. What a wo- that could be the worst boss ever. You know, he just arrives. You know, he just comes in. Uh, he announces though that tonight he will announce the commissioners 
of Raw and SmackDown. More on that later on. Then we have Cesaro versus Kevin Owens. I like that, by the way. Uh, the, the the Vince stuff. Even though it doesn't make sense that he arrived just then, but I liked it. Set the tone for the night. We had Seven Owens versus Kevin Owens. Yeah, really good match here. Went about fifth, 10 minutes, sorry. Really good stuff. Really enjoyed this. Uh, Owens got the win with a modified TKO neckbreaker variation to get the win. Really good, enjoyable match. And then after the match, Sami Zayn comes through the crowd and beats on Owens. Cesaro then swings Owens for good measure. Makes me excited for Battleground. Pretty good stuff there. You got Owens with the heat with the win. You got Cesaro back over at the end with the swing. You got Zayn over. As an underdog babyface, you can who that that fighting, the fighting feature in his character. I, I was a big fan of this. Probably ma- it was match of the night. Not probably. There's nothing about it. No doubt about it. A really good match. But it's Cesaro and Kevin Owens. The issue is, is how many times have we seen this now? I think it's like every week for like the past three weeks. It's like get on with it. Then we have a backstage pro with the club, where they're promoting the uh, tag team match against Enzo and Cass tonight on Raw, as well as the six man at Battleground. One thing I didn't like, and one thing that they're probably going to do for the next 17.5 years. They are going to repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, this beat-up John Cena fucking shenanigan. How many times has AJ Styles tweeted hashtag beat-up John Cena? How many times has Dottie tweeted up hashtag beat-up John Cena? This was a week ago. And they're talking about it in two promos. They did that in the promo here. They did that in the pre-match promo where the club and Enzo and Castle were pretty much in the ring. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake. It was like that, oh, God. They always do this, like, oh, okay, out of nowhere. As awesome as that is, they're going to keep that fucking going. They just... They, what was it that um, Jericho said that was so fucking stupid? Oh, he said something really ridiculous earlier this year, and it just stuck. I erased it from my mind already. Someone in the, put in the comments. And then speaking of, of, of fucking up my mind, he was Slater and Titus O'Neil happened. Uh, the story for this is Slater is angry at Titus for being American and losing on the 4th of July. Well, I, I, I will give them this credit. I, I always say on this program that I'm pissed off because they're just resting for resting's sake. And I, I do say that a lot. And you guys know I say that a lot. That's why I don't enjoy Raw most of the time. But at least they're actually taking some thought and effort into making these matches actually mean something. Uh, so Titus gets to win the Clash of the Titus. I, I mean, Titus O'Neil's character to me is dead and gone. Like, by Catras down the line. Like, I have no interest in it right now. He lost on Father's Day when he was the father of the year. He lost on the 4th of July when he's an American. I just have no time for Titus O'Neil. Then, oh my god. This was the most blatant copying of a wrestling promotion I have ever seen in the history of the professional wrestling industry. And even the sports entertainment industry. So we have the New Day and the Whites and the Compound. This is the crappy version of Final Deletion. So I'm, I'll break it down a little bit. But firstly, check out the Final Deletion. If you haven't already with Matt and Jeff and Brother Nero. Please give it a watch. It was awesome. Just fucking magnificent. I've watched it like two or three times already. Really great stuff. Uh, basically Woods hides behind the, the tree. But Wyatt gets him. There's some brawling and some brawling and some brawling. New Day get the upper hand, but Wyatt and their family sit there. And hundreds of these flashing light gimmicks come on. The New Day then run. They they did this to copy TNA, and it stunk. I'm sorry. The reason why TNA's one was so successful is because they built this story. They built these characters. These characters for seven plus months now. What made that special... Is that indeed. The seven month build. Here it's. Oh my god look how much fucking social media fucking coverage they got. Look how much coverage they got over this. Look at all these news sites posting positive about this. How about we do the same with a new day. Everyone likes the new day. Why do we do that? And everyone loves the Wyatt family. No it's not the same. It's really not. If you just do this for doing its sake. It doesn't make a difference. If you do it because you need to. And the story makes you do it. It makes it far, far superior for TNA. TNA 10, WWE nil. Awful. Shame. Absolutely just great. Like, I-, I touched on this earlier on the show. Like, they copied CMLL last week. Now they're copying TNA. They're going to fucking copy Ring of Honor next week. God, Ben, they made that club versus Enzo and Cass. 
Uh, the match ends when Styles launches Cass into the crowd, causing a DQ. And then all the club have Enzo basically cornered and trapped. And, and Enzo had great facials. Like, honestly, he had really good f- facials. Cena comes out to make the save. Uh, then you have the stare down with the club on the ramp. And, and Cena, Enzo, and Cass in the ring. Germany, I enjoyed this. The match was okay. I expected better from the likes of Anderson and Gallows, but what can you do? But it done its job, and that's get you hyped for the battleground. Simple. Then you had Dana Brooke versus Sasha Banks. <sighs> this was so long. This, I don't know how long this actually was, but this dragged like a motherfucker for me personally. Like, I'm a fan of Sasha Banks. If there's like one woman's wrestler that I would want to watch, it would be Sasha Banks. But this bored the fuck out of me. Uh, she does get a good pop though, doesn't she? Miss Sasha Banks, when she comes out, she always does get a good pop. Uh, she hits the bank statement, and um, Brooke taps. But again, just to touch on this, it felt really, really, really long. After the match, though, Charlotte announces on SmackDown, that on SmackDown, sorry, it will be Sasha Banks versus Brooks, where if Brooke wins, where if Banks wins, sorry, she gets a championship match, in certain words. She, she explained it so fucking awfully. She put it like, oh, if you beat Brooke again because you won by a fluke, then it's possible that I might give you a championship match or along those lines. And I'm like, can you just make it so simple? How easy is it? How hard is it? Look, I think your win here tonight over Dana Brooke was a fluke. If you beat Dana Brooke on SmackDown, clean, I will give you a championship match. Boom, it's that simple. Stop fucking making it last 10 hours like this fucking match. That really pissed me off and frustrated me as we get to our main event segment. That was the main event of the night. Believe it or not. That was the main event of the night. The next is talking with Vinnie Mac, The Toilet, Shane O'Mac, and Stephanie Mac. Stephanie Mac. Vinnie Mac. Stephanie Mac. That sounds wrong. I'm just going to have a quick drink of my alcoholic beverage. Buy your Have an Alcoholic Beverage merchandise from, from the fucking link in the description. That was a great plug. Beautiful. So we have Shane McMahon come out. Great pop, great ovation. This was a this was the arena he debuted well redebuted or returned, sorry. A few months ago in February. I'll never forget that moment as long as I live. That was awesome. Stephanie comes out, chorus of booze. Vinnie Mac comes out. Oh, this is this is the death thing. Now this could be like its own show. Like lots of people wish, you know, illness, retirement, death even. On Vince McMahon. I. I'm. Like part of me thinks. Okay if he goes. Good riddance. But the other part of me is like. Fuck. What what would the industry be right now. If it wasn't for Vince. Like. And, and don't say. Oh PWG would be like the best thing ever. Like. Don't say that. Because the coverage. The media coverage. The W gets is unbelievable. Like, I do believe everyone in that crowd should bow when Vinnie Mac comes out. And I'm not just saying that to just say I'm saying because, like, I respect everything he's done. You know, I, I honestly, I, and I thank him, obviously, for making, like, wrestling what it is. You know, even though he does, you know, brand it as sports entertainment, they're still going out there and wrestling. And, you know, it is the big dog, and they do draw good ratings for a television show anyway, still. They're always, like, number in the top five of television shows each week. Even though it does go down. But I just... I don't like seeing people wish death upon him. I think that's a bit far. Do I think he needs to take take a step back? Yes. Do I think he should retire? Maybe. But still, what a fucking legend Vinnie Mac is. And there'll be comments below. I guarantee you. Everyone can look. Oh, what are you saying that for? You, oh, Vinnie Mac is a fucking... Le- he's a cocksucker. He fucking killed. He choked the wrestling business. Yes, the past few years have stunk. But before that... The actual era, ruthless regression era, WrestleMania era, took wrestling to a new light level. All right, I wanted to get that off my chest. Uh, but anyway, back to the actual segment. We have Vince come out. He says he's disappointed in both Stephanie and Shane, and he says he wants competition. He doesn't want this fancy pantsy blubbering around. He wants competition. He wants cutthroat competition. Uh, Shane shoots. He should run SmackDown Live because Steph and Vince have been choking the business, which I just touched on earlier. Uh, Vince says Shane is the commissioner of SmackDown. Shane then starts sprinting and running around doing his flip-flip gimmick, like really funny stuff. 
and Stephanie will be running Raw. Very, very interesting. Uh, both then, both have to have general managers. So they will be like the COO, and they both have to have general managers each. Does that mean Stephanie and Shane won't be on every show? Maybe. I, 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 what's the difference between a commissioner and a general manager? Like, I thought, you know, I thought the way they were going is Stephanie would be the COO of Raw, she has a general manager. Shane would be the COO of SmackDown, Shane has a general manager. But isn't a general manager and a commissioner the exact same thing? Like, when William Regal was commissioner, he was doing the same thing as GMs. When when Shawn Michaels in the 1999, and here's the cheapest plug ever, the WWE 99 series continues on lkvip.podbean.com. Subscribe now, 99 pence per month. God, I say that so much. It's not even funny, so just think about it. If you just go and sign up now and just listen to the great content. And what's great about that is, as it's on Podbean, you can install the app. And because you're a VIP, you can specifically download it into a specific file where you can actually play it in your car, while you're riding your bike to work, while you're walking to work. Simple. Boom. Simple. Boom. Go sign up now. Boom. Uh, th- th- what was I saying before? I just went on the nastiest plug on the planet. I was touching on... GMs, yeah, like with the commissioner, like what there is no difference between a commissioner and a GM, in my opinion, anyway. The way they should have done it is Shane COO, Stephanie COO, and GMs. But again, they're trying to create intrigue for next week's Raw, as that's when they'll be announced. So as a whole, I, I, and I will continue with breaking this down because there's still a lot more that happens. As a whole, they've done a good job in building Battleground. They've done a good job of building SmackDown, at least with something with the Miz TV segment and obviously the Dana Brooke Sasha Banks. Next week's Raw, you got W Championship match and general manager reveal. They've been hyping the brand extension a lot on the, the SmackDown Live on July 19th. Not bad. Not bad actually promoting this week. Uh, Vince wants them to compete, even if they have to break the law if necessary. Just don't get caught. And what I liked about this is Vince even said specifically he wants them to compete over TV ratings, merchandise sale, live event figures. I like that a lot. It makes it feel real. Boom. Then we have Stephanie. She comes out. She cut. Well, not comes out. Sorry, I'm just used to saying that. Stephanie cuts a promo on Shane, saying she will bury S- SmackDown. She will bury Shane. She will wish Shane wasn't a McMahon, and she even wishes Shane wasn't born. Shane says, "Fine, whatever. Game on." Stephanie slaps the shit out of Shane's mouth and says, "The only game is my husband," and walks off. I like that. I mean, does that maybe mean that Triple H will be Stephanie's GM? That's a possibility. And then maybe, as I've I've been saying this for for weeks now, maybe that third hour could become weekly NXT programming. The first hour could be NXT. The second two hours could be Raw. That way, it's just it just makes it. And then that way, you know, people will be like, oh, but the network subscriptions might go down because NXT's not on there. No, because you have one pay-per-view from Raw a month, one pay-per-view from SmackDown a month, one pay-per-view from NXT a month. That's three pay-per-views live on the network. Okay, plus all the vintage content, the classic content, the original series. Boom. Simple. Like, that makes sense to me. And that way, when these guys are training, they're training in front of a live, big audience, not the full cell. Look at Adam Rose. Adam Rose perfected his character in NXT because those full self fuckers were cheering him, even though that gimmick wouldn't work in the main roster, when Adam Rose went to the main roster, it just didn't work. And it's upsetting. It is upsetting. So I mean, he's doing some decent stuff in the indies now. It's Aldo Rose. I saw on one news site he was rusting and, and he's doing his um, oh 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 gimmick again. So good for him. But as a whole, it was. It's just. I believe that. If you want to train people, see what the casual audience thinks. Okay, so Finn Balor versus Nakamura, imagine that. If that was in front of that crowd, and the crowd weren't making any noise, you'd be like, okay, what's going on here? Why is this different? But then again, it's a developmental territory still. It's a developmental brand. So then again, I can see why you'd want to keep it at a small venue like Full Sail. But at the same time, I, I just hate how, you know, people like that, and like Ty Dillinger, he gets this 10-10-10 stuff. If it goes to the main roster, no one will care. Lucha Dragons, the Lucha was really over. But on the main roster, no one cares. The Ascension was over in, in NXT. On the main roster, no one cares. And it's just not fair on the talent. So if you if inst- you can remove the no one cares by having them train in front of that audience, that to me makes sense anyway. 
So as a whole, I'm going to give this show a tie. There was boring matches, but at the same time, there was matches that made sense. They were happening for a reason. They did a good job in building to the brand extension. They did a good job in building to Battleground. And they did an okay job at making everything seem important. I'm looking forward to Rollins and Brothers next week. So the promo was fucking awesome. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, sorry again this show isn't live. And sh- sorry that this was late. It's just, what can you do? I fell asleep. It is very, very late English time. I hope you can all appreciate that. And again, I am so deeply sorry. I, I hope it doesn't happen again. Anyway, thank you so much for checking this review out. 25 plus minutes on a show where nothing really happens. I'll take that. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this on lkvip.podbean.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Listen to this on youtube.com. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you leave a comment. Thank you so much, everyone watching. Make sure you head over to pressing.me, kickersports.net. That's kfcosports.net. It's where the world goes to kick ass. Show for combat sports and above all, where it's okay to be a passionate fan. From this passionate fan to you, make sure you stay safe. Make sure you stay well, because there's a fucked up world out there. And I'll be damn sure catching your asses down the line.